Good morning, everybody. It is September 11th. It was interesting this morning. My daughter came into my room um, before she went out for her day. And um, we were talking about what we were going to do today. So I looked at the calendar and I realized it's September 11th. And I was just thinking back about that day um, and where I was and how not real it seemed to see the news and the buildings and wow, it's it's an interesting um, thing that we all get to live through, at least those of us that live through it. It's weird to see things um, of such destruction. And this is not what I was thinking of starting off. What makes you happy um, today? Um, but I guess it's important to remember um, and have gratitude for being alive. And for being in the world being a different energy like that kind of stuff can't exist if all of us are choosing more and more consciousness so hopefully there won't be such devastation um hopefully there won't be wars and and things you know what what are the possibilities of um, all of us coming together as oneness and create a completely different reality where force and fighting against doesn't have to exist because it doesn't really work anyway. Um, yeah, so... Let's just move past that and get to what makes you happy. So the other day, I um, I took my bike out for the first time in years, like literally years. It's funny how with the lockdown a few years ago, like it's easier to gauge time from, from that point. But I I don't even know that I rode my bike during then it was before then. So it's been years. And um, one indication that you're doing something that makes you happy is your face. Have you ever noticed that when you're doing something that makes you happy, you can you can barely stop smiling? Like I rode my bike and I, I was so happy, my body was happy. And my face just had this permanent smile. And I remember coming back and getting ready to shower. I was like, wow, it's still smiling. Um, so have you ever decided that you like doing something and decided that it makes you happy, but your face is kind of like, mm. <laughs> or you're like, mm. <laughs> So get a mirror, look in your face and see, is this really making you happy? It's funny. Uh, sometimes the simplest things can make you happy. Maybe it's just going for a walk by yourself. Like it doesn't have to be amusement parks and um, all kinds of equipment and stuff. What if what makes you and your body happy is much simpler than that. Um, and what if it's more of an energy of being and less of what you're doing? So that's bringing up some something for you all. So I'm going to use the access consciousness clearing statement. Um, I'm sure. If you're on this, you know the clearing statement, but you can always go to the YouTube channel. Um, 
and find out the more about the access consciousness clearing statement. But anyway, everything this is all bringing up, will you destroy and uncreate it and see what else is possible? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, povads, and beyonds. <clears throat> yeah. Um, how many of you have decided that it's fun to do things that um, that you did maybe when you were younger? Maybe you went to concerts or something like big, massive concerts. Is it still fun? And it's okay if things change and it's okay if you really enjoyed yourself then and you don't enjoy it anymore. Maybe you like small venue concerts. Or maybe you like just listening to your phone, uh, <laughs> listening to a live album or something. What if it's okay to choose what really, really makes you happy? Even if it doesn't necessarily include other people. <laughs> what if you were willing to? be happy just you and when you're happy you just be this different energy in the world and it's actually an invitation for other people to be happy too and they may or may not choose it doesn't matter you're not trying to get anybody to be or do anything when you're happy you're just happy so Anywhere you're waiting for other people to be happy so that you can be happy, like how many of you are parents or partners and you're waiting for your partner or your kids or your, your parents to be happy so that then you can be happy. Yikes. <laughs> we might be waiting a long time because <laughs> they have to choose it. So. Everywhere you're putting everybody else's happiness before yours, will you destroy and uncreate that? Right and wrong, good and bad, pot and pock, all nine shorts, boys, poets, and meons. Yeah. I've just noticed that when I'm happy, it sort of doesn't matter what other people are choosing. Sure, you'd like them to be happy too, but... You, you have more space and allowance for people and what they're choosing. And I don't know about you, but when somebody's trying to get me to do something, even if it's supposed to be something fun, like, oh, you need to see this movie. You have to see, you have to, and then they push, push, push. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do what people push on me. May, if I'm invited, hey, do you want to come to this thing? Hey, this was so awesome. Would you like to come? That's a different energy. Notice how it's more of a pulling, not a pushing and a forcing. There's um, there's choice involved. And each of us have choice. And each of us really don't like to be forced to do anything. Right? So what invitation can you be? What invitation are you without even knowing that you're being? when you're happy, you know? What if you just went out for a walk or went to the store, went to get ice cream just because you felt like it? And being that enjoyment and the lightness and the fun that getting ice cream is creates a different energy around you. And maybe people want to reach out and connect, or maybe people want to hang out with you, or who knows what it creates. Uh, maybe your plants perk up and grow more flowers or something. <laughs> um, you know, this is, this is interesting. Wow. I just got this total awareness about that. Um, I love orchids and, and I've always had potted orchids and, you know, after a few months, the buds drop and they turn into just a stem and leaves. And for years, I would just replace it and 
put the plant outside and see if it was going to regrow, but it usually didn't. Well, the, the more I've been choosing happy, peace, joy over the last, you know, decades, um, they're starting to reflower, like, especially in the last couple of years, my plants, my orchids are starting to get a new stem and new flowers, and then they flower for a longer period of time. So what if being this different energy even creates more for the plants and the trees and the earth? And maybe it's showing you in subtle ways that you didn't get it either. Cause I was like, oh, I wonder why that's starting to show up like that. So what can you acknowledge about what you are being already that you haven't acknowledged and just let it in. Yeah. Let me just check and see if there's any comments. For some reason, it doesn't really refresh on here. Um, but if you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead and go ahead. I'm just going to try to get on my other. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> there we go. Anyway. All right. No comments. Okay. So what else can you choose that makes you happy? Um, one of the things that I really love to do is baking. And when I was a kid, I used to bake and like make up recipes, not even using a real recipe. And one of my friends who lived next door, she and I would play together. And one time we made this cake. It was really incredible. <laughs> Most of the time it didn't taste good, but this one was great. And we put like marshmallows on top when it baked, it turned into like this mountain landscape of um, light brown and soft white peaks. It was really kind of cool. And, and her whole family served it for dinner and <laughs> they were all like a little reluctant to try it, but it turned out pretty good. So ever since I was a little, I've loved baking and I still love baking. So if I have the space and I'm like, mm, now what do I do? Or maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not as happy as I could be. I'll just look at something to bake. And that's super fun. Fun and easy. Ah, can you speak to listening to your body? Yes. Listening to your body is, um, is a really interesting topic because, um, my whole life, I always thought I was talking to my body as I just had a really great relationship with it. But come to find out in the access bars class, if you've taken access bars, there's something called um, the automatic pilot, your autopilot. Um, and it's, it's called the Beckham X. It's a weird acronym. But it's an entity that's your autopilot. So when you don't want to do something or you can't deal with something, you just want to kind of go on autopilot, that entity takes over. So I was communicating with that autopilot for most of my life up until about eight years ago when they first came up with the clearing to clear the autopilot. <laughs> and then I had to relearn all over again how to communicate with my body. So probably the easiest way to start is to just get present, lower your barriers, put your hands on your lap or your belly or your chest and just like tune in to your body. And then apologize because 
they've been years and years and years that you've been with your body and you have not been listening. So I'm so sorry. I'm going to start listening now. And can you make it easy for me to understand the clues and cues that you give me? And then from there, um, muscle testing is really easy. If you stand with your feet together and you hold something in front of you, I'm not going to stand right now, but I'll hold my espresso and you hold it in front of you and you ask body, would you like to eat this or body? Would you like to drink this? And if it moves forward, it's yes. If it moves back, it's a no. And if it's side to side it means ask a different question. So you can practice with that. And it's not about getting it right. It's about recognizing when you're actually listening or when you're forcing or overriding. So um, when you're listening to your body and it's like, yes, I would like that. It tastes amazing, like amazing. Let's see right now. Mm, yeah. Now, the thing to note is that we think we need to eat a certain portion, or we're used to eating a certain amount and certain times a day. But if you're really present with every bite, every sip, everything that you do with and for and ingesting in your body, including, you know, the toothpaste that you use and stuff like that. Um, as soon as it doesn't taste good anymore, that's usually an indication that your body's done. So there's many times that I'll just have two or three bites of something and then my body doesn't want anymore. It doesn't taste amazing and my body's done. So what if you only ate or drank as much as your body actually desires and requires? And the thing is, the, the more you do that, the happier your body gets and the better you feel. I know it's super simple, <laughs> but it works. And so many times I, I just see people um, putting stuff in and not asking, not being in the question, overriding. And there's this energy that comes up and it's like, wow, interesting. So pay attention when it has to do with your body, whether you're with people, if your body is happy to be with people, maybe it wants to be in nature a little bit more. Um, and just start paying attention and start checking it out, making choices. Every time you choose, you get more awareness. So it's not about choosing the right thing. It's just about choosing. Um, yesterday, uh, I went to Napa and had fun exploring downtown Napa. And at a certain point, my body was hungry. And I was like, oh, what would you like to eat? And wherever I had parked, I had walked by this little place that had like a window. It was like takeout only. And I noticed it when I started walking around. And I was walking looking for some place to eat and turned the corner and there it was. And my body was like that. <laughs> and what's interesting is for me, I, I'm, I've practiced this for so long. I, I just lean into it. I try not to make it too logical and linear, but it was like these little cues, little, little wispy awareness. And um, I looked at the menu and most of the time when I look at a menu, I, everything's just like, it's like hieroglyphics. I kind of glaze over it. And there's one thing that pops, one thing that I can read. And I look at it and I go, oh, body, would you like to eat that? And yes. So my body shows me what it wants to eat. And you can practice and get stuff. And if it doesn't taste amazing, then oops, choose again. You don't have to eat it. Um, so I got I got this wrap and it was 
amazing, totally amazing. And it was just enough. It wasn't huge. It wasn't too much. Um, but be willing to waste. I know you probably were told you have to eat everything on your plate and the starving people in Africa and stuff like that. But um, there's a funny thing that Gary would say. If you're not willing to waste it, you'll waste it like it'll get on your waist. <laughs> so, you know, be willing to leave some bites. It's not going to be the end of the world. Compost it if you're concerned about totally wasting something. And just start trusting your body because it will feel so much better when you don't overeat. It will feel so much better and you'll have more energy and then you can do more of the things that make you happy because you'll be happier. Your body will be happy. Um, another thing is to just move more, even if it's silly, easy movements. Like I've been doing these things where you just stand and rotate for a while and, you know, go up and down and just really easy. It doesn't have to be this huge workout you know, muscle building, you can tone your body and get blood flow going and include some of the access energy flows within your body and create a lean, toned, healthy body. Easy, like easy with ease. So if that sounds like fun, invite your body to show you, maybe it'll find some videos or some something that it wants to do. Maybe you want to dance, maybe you like walking, riding your bike. What can you choose that would make you happy? Yeah. What could you choose that would make you happy? And what else is possible? Um, let's see. There was something else I wanted to bring up and I'm empty of mind. That happens a lot. <laughs> um, well, uh, this week I have a clarity night coming up um, called Where is My Magic? So for any of you that know that you are capable of creating magic and it's been backfiring or you think your wand is broken or you're like magic, what? Or you knew there was magic when you were a kid and it's just been far too long. I'm going to be using the access consciousness tools and clearings and sharing um, bits of wisdom that I've learned along the way to find your magic and start using it for what you'd like instead of against you. And yeah, it's going to be fun. So I hope you'll come. Um, you can check it out on my website under the events. And then next week, we're starting an energy pull with magic and creating magic everywhere. So a few weeks ago, I did a different energy poll about um, getting your products and services to sell themselves and doing that just little 15, 20 minutes a day for the week really created a lot. And I had so much fun. I wanted to do another one. So if you want to start creating and moving energetically in your world, just like moving blood in your body, just moving energies throughout your world in ways that will contribute to you and to everyone around you, to your business, to your bank account, to your relationships, whatever it is, come and play. It's awesome to exercise those muscles. It's easy. It's fun. And what have you got to lose? So um, it's just about time to jump on my other group and do the expanding exercise. So if you like, come to the Finding Your Sparkle group on Facebook, and I will see you over there. Have an amazing week.
Thanks for joining.